Hello. Come. Hey, come on in. I'm Tom. Tom. Fred. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks uh, for coming. Yeah, no problem. All I think right. We so have a challenge here. Yeah, I heard. So let's see what we can do. Let's get the. Let's go have a seat actually, and we'll we'll talk about what's Great. going on. Great. Come on in. So we've had stacks for a couple of weeks. He was in a, a shelter mm -hmm. for, and he's he's about a year old. Great dog. We love him. It's a. It's a, he's been a handful. But when it comes to the cat, because we've had Tony, the cat, for a while now. And How old is Tony? Tony's probably about seven years old, eight years old. Oh, see. So we've had him for a while. He knows the house. He's comfortable in the house. And uh, he pretty much ran the house until he brought Stax home. Perfect. And yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was difficult um, from the beginning because I guess because of uh, how he just sees Tony is a prey and no matter what we do, no matter how we interact with the dog, there is just no way Stax will, will just feel, feel comfortable around. Tony. So does he, what does he do? Does he like chase him? Is he oh, trying to hang? he chases him and he chases him with a lot of vengeance with that, with, with this, with this ire that he just wants to, I don't think he would because he has cornered him a couple of times. Yeah. Or once actually that, I, that you know, he kind of got a little out of hand and he didn't go after him and try to kill him. Um, you just think it's a game. I'm hoping it was a game and I hope it is a game, but it's, it's gotten to the point where it's a bit scary because we just don't want anything to happen. We're trying to get the, the two of them to, you know, uh, cooperate and, and what's you know, your live in the house in peace. Okay. Hey, Hey. Hey, hey, hey! See, that's the cat door he ripped out. That's a new one. We just got about a week ago. Stacks. So I always like to tell people in the integration process, like in your case, you're bringing in an adult dog to the house. Now, if you have a puppy, this is a little different because puppies really can't do a lot of damage. They might chase the cat around and it might be cute, but they typically, in experiences like this, they typically grow up like my dogs. They're all 100 pounds or more. Once they grow up with the animal together, then they, they really just have a playful relationship. When you integrate a new dog that's maybe a year or older or six months or older, you have to make sure that it's safe for the cat. So making sure that you're integrating with safety precautions. So some of those things will include like baby gates. And in your case, your dog is big enough where baby gate's not gonna work. He'll jump right over that thing, blow right through it. If you have a smaller dog, you can use a baby gate. And what that does is it kind of like, it's like when you put a new fish into a fish tank, it takes 24 hours for them to integrate into that mm -hmm. tank and get used to the water, if you will. So that helps a lot with the integration process. It keeps them safe. It keeps the cat feeling a little safe. They're not being yeah. chased. Um, if your cat can jump up on things, that's a little different too. That provides them a little bit of safety. Um, but you gotta make sure that if you are getting an adult dog, especially for you guys at home, um, you, you need to make sure that when you are bringing an adult dog in that you have those safety precautions in place. And what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna throw up what an X-Pen is in the, in the corner here on the screen. Because an X-Pen is basically like, some people use them for puppy raising, where it's like a, it's like a really big um, play pen for a baby. Yes but you can get them up to four feet and I'll link a description in below. You guys can see what that looks like on Amazon or something. But what that does is it also allows your dog to be in an area that the cat is also associated with. So um, it's not great for bigger dogs because it is a small area, but if your cat is really comfortable with being in spaces that are smaller as well, you can put your cat in there and just kind of integrate them that way. That way it's a really safe, bet and you don't have to worry and stress so much that nothing's going to happen to the cat. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to grab stacks. We're right. going to get them in here and I'm going to go over some of these really key fundamental principles of obedience that really helps with this. And I think the most important thing for you as a dog owner is to realize that we can't tell a fish not to swim. And in this case, it means like I can't take that prey drive out of him, but I can certainly give you the fundamental obedience to manage the situation, to say like, hey buddy, I know what you wanna do, mm -hmm. but I have to teach you these things. And right now it doesn't sound like you guys have any structure like within what you're doing. He's kind of running the roost, yeah? He is, uh, like I said, if we don't take certain precautions, it's gonna right. turn into a yeah. bad thing. So the obedience portion is not only gonna help you guys with managing this dog-cat situation and helping them integrate, but it's also gonna be an outstanding way for you guys to get to know each other and, and, and it's great 
obedience anyway. I mean, yes. everybody should have the control. And, and what you'll see also too, is this will transfer to your life. You have friends over, you have family over. Right. It is cute when a dog comes up and says, hey, I love you, but it's not gonna be cute when they're jumping and they're barking, right. they're overstimulated, they're, they're darting out the door. You really wanna make sure that everything that you do with your dog is structured and that way you want them to be a dog, be funny and cute. But when you say, hey buddy, I need a little bit of focus here, you need to be able to do that. So these exercises are gonna be crucial across the board, not only for the dog um, in the cat situation, but just across the board with your relationship with the dog. Oh, I know. Sit. Good boy. I know. Good boy. Good boy. I know. I know. Okay. okay. Stex, come. So the three things I like to teach dogs for this type of stuff, it's very basic. The place command, the recall, which is the come command, and then the leave it command. So the place command is basically a targeted area like this bed here that we have set up. So it could be a bed, it could be a cot, anything other than the ground. And what we wanna be able to do is say, hey dog, go there. Because what that does is it initially takes away and decompresses that pressure of him going like, where's the cat? So if you say, again, like we talked about before, I know what you wanna do, you're a dog, you have a prey drive but here's what I want you to do, and it'll decompress that prey drive. So what the recall does is exactly how it sounds. So when he's out searching for the cat and Tony's kind of running away and, and hiding, you can recall him to you, which will then allow you to also decompress that hunt drive, that prey drive, and basically break the attention of him constantly frantically looking for the cat. So last but not least will be the leave it command. The leave it command is gonna be universally used for pretty much anything you do not want him engaged in. That's gonna come at the very end when we bring Tony out, hopefully we can get him out of his, his, uh, his, his scared place, and we can then say, hey Stax, leave it, and then for him to disengage off of Tony to redirect his attention. All right, so this is Tony. So we're gonna really practice the leave it command. So okay. you gotta remember, Tony is in your hands. I have the ball. Stax, please. Good. Good. Good place. All right, now you're gonna let him out. All right, guys, it's time for the final moment where we're actually gonna get Tony the cat out Wait. and we're gonna... Do you think he's ready? Yeah, I think he's ready. I think that you guys worked really hard and I think that... You don't think he's ready? Um, if you think you gotta, he's ready... Listen, you gotta try... Trust the process. If you, if you think he's ready, I think uh, he's we ready. have worked hard on it. If you I, think he's ready, I'm ready. I think he's ready. So as I was saying, we're gonna get Tony the cat out, and we're gonna try this out for real. Get cut up. Good. All right. So now what you're gonna do is now we got the cat out. What I need you to do is you're gonna- This is already better. Yeah. You're gonna call him backwards, and you're gonna tell him to place. So recall, place. walk backwards. Uh, place. Good. Down. Stay. Good place. Good place. Stay. Stay. All right, so now you're going to work on the final, which is the leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Good. All right, Fred, so now you're going to recall him to you. Stax, come. Good. Now send him to his place. Stax, place. Oh. Good. Stax, place. Good. So now what I want you to do is... Good leave. Stax, good leave. Leave it. Okay, now, Christine, why don't you just get up and just walk that way, and he's gonna follow Christine and the cat. Tell him to leave it. Leave it. Good. Let him out a little bit. Let him out a little bit, break. Break. Good, uh -uh. stop, nope. Gotta let him out, so we gotta do a recall. Okay, Okay. so we'll All do right, it again, right, so put right. him back. Stacks, please. So you let him out, have him here, and we're gonna do that whole process again, okay? Stacks, break. Good, let him go, hold, recall him. Stacks, come. Good, come. Stack, place. Good. Wonderful. So see how nice that is? Oh, that's great. Yeah, so it's a little better than 
getting dragged to the cat door every time. Hey, 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 Stacks. So those three things with the, hey, come back to me because I know you're interested. Yep. And then giving him a job of like, this is where I want you to be because Tony's got to live his life too. Yep. And then you telling him to leave it, to disengage him, to say like, okay, I won't go, will really, really help you guys in the future. Okay. And then again, what it does is it allows him to actually start associating Tony with like, hey, maybe this isn't so bad. And then eventually the goal is for them to, to coexist. And if not, you have the ability to manage this as long as you want to. Yeah. And it's really easy with that, that, that obedience. The whole quality of life is gonna be different in this house with uh, Tony being able to you know, walk around right. the house, do what he has to do, and having him under control. So you're, you're, not like, you're not completely out of the woods yet. There's still a lot of work that you need to do, but now you're in a situation, you have the tools to manage it, and you're yeah. gonna be a lot more successful now. Instead of just having him run around and be a shepherd, yeah. now he's gonna be a shepherd with structure and control. Yes, I can see it.